Good morning. This is Dr. Bill White. I'm with the American Orthodontic Society, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit this morning about closed bites that are deadly closed and also closed bites that are skeletally closed. Now, this particular case has a closed bite in both skeletal and dental area. So we're going to try to open this up both dentally and skeletally as we uh, do this case. And it's something if you do very much orthodontics, you really should understand this uh, quite uh, well, really. Uh, now, on many cases, you'll have a open bite dentally but you don't want to open that up skeletally. And so you have to put these blocks in. We have a video uh, that I did just before this one a little bit there uh, where we did not want to open it skeletally, but we wanted to open it dentally. So as we open it dentally, if you're not careful, you'll tend to open it skeletally. But if you do what we showed you in that other case and put these blocks in the posterior area to chew on and it keeps the teeth down or it keeps them from over erupting and that keeps it from increasing the vertical dimension of the lower third of the face. Now this, if you increase that very much, it really messes up the appearance of the facial structure. So let's look at this case right here and uh, it's a real sweet, nice lady. I know their family. I've done uh, orthodontic work on her children and her cousins and lots of different people in the family. And uh, they're very fine, fine folks. And she's got a kind of a closed bite skeletally and a real closed bite <laughs> dentally. And we're going to try to increase the vertical height of the face a little bit as we open the bite and here and I'll show you how we do that during this case. Now there are several other problems that she has here. We'll kind of try to deal with them as we go along through the uh, case. Now here is the uh, picture of course of the models and this is a real closed bite you see you don't see anything of the lower anterior teeth and this is a class 2 division 2 type case uh, and we we'll look at it from the side and you'll see you have no area to put brackets on cases like this you you have to open the bite to get the brackets on there to start with. And you see how close this fits right down here where these upper centrals are coming back and the lower anteriors are going right up beside them and they wear the lingual side of these anterior centrals up here. And of course the laterals are sticking out to the side. And this is class two. This molar right here should actually be coming down with this groove coming in something like this you see and so we need to move this lower jaw forward where this point of this bicuspid will go there and this one here and the cuspid somewhere in this area right here to bring this forward. Well, there's no earthly way that can come forward with the teeth like this. So we're going to have to bring these teeth out and up as we carry them up. And we'll have to bring these on the bottom down and then I'll let them come together. Now, the force that we use to pick these teeth up comes from this six-year molar. We have an intruding wire that goes up here, and we've got a lot of videos on that. You bring it down, it tends to pull these teeth up, and it's out in front of the root, so it torques them out as it does, as it brings them up also. This wire will be bent down here, so it's coming up like that.
now it's getting its force back here so the force to pick these up wants this to go down and you may have to think about that just a little bit and as it pushes as this wire you bring it down here it's like prizing this part with a bar or something in here it'll tend to bring the tooth down and lean it back in this direction and usually some little bit of space will open between the molar and the bicuspids and this will tilt a little bit but as it does all the occlusion is up against those teeth right there and so they don't move very much and that's why your little class 2 gadgets you put on here and you wear this it tends to do the same thing and the occlusion keeps them in place and so you can correct a lot of early class 2 stuff by just sticking that or you can correct any class 2 and if you're doing a lot of class 2 you come in and put a little thin layer of acrylic on top of those teeth and it lets them slide back a lot easier a lot better so we're not trying to cover that today so what we're dealing with is this out out here in the front the opening the bite and also we're going to try to open the facial height of this particular case and uh, go back here and show this lady We'd like to give her a little bit more space in here, see, and try to open the bite down here, and it'll make her look nicer, and uh, it's just very critical. You, you don't want to get this too much. If you uh, give an extra half or three quarters of an inch to the vertical height of the face, it makes people look bad, really. And so we have to watch in dealing with closed dental bites and closed or open skeletal bites. In other words, these are high angle cases that people tell you if you're just getting into orthodontics, stay away from the high angle cases because they'll eat your lunch. You'll make them even higher unless you really know what you're doing with them. So we want to advise you on that. All right, let's go back to the deep bite and then we look at both sides and it's class two i mean this needs to go to that and here and this molar back and we have to intrude the lower anteriors and intrude the upper anteriors and bring this jaw forward in treating in treating this case and that's exactly what we'll uh, try to do and we do it pretty much and this side is class two division two also the same way there's no room for the brackets so you have to put something in there that, to open the bite to start with and so if you're uh, trying to increase the vertical out here then you put your block in the front so we put a removable gadget in the roof of the mouth that she bites on and that allows us to get onto the brackets and we start day one with these intruding wires and also a conventional little flexible wire to line up and rotate the teeth and do various little jobs with that but the main thing is opening the bite deadly and with these double wires we can open somebody's bite we put it all on the first day and we can have the bite level while you're getting ready to if you're just using a and especially these little old curved wires like this they'll push these down and this up and then these up too they'll do some good but nothing like an intruding arch will work in there okay let's go ahead and run through this now these teeth will be brought out right in here as they are brought up you see now look at the wear facets on these teeth i can't uh, well i'm going to draw to them and then erase it and you can see the wear facets on the back of these teeth that's where the lower anterior teeth come in there and i'm going to show you a, a picture we shoot from the back side uh, on these models you can do that 
And another problem she has, of course, is she's got some tor large tori here on the bottom arch, and that kind of robs part of your tongue space in there. It uh, doesn't really affect her too much, and you can move the teeth with tori and all this and intrude and everything. So I didn't have these taken out. She didn't want to do that. If you wanted to clean that up, you they go in and lay a flap here and just uh, actually grind them off, you know. Uh, it's, they're like a knot on a log. I've, I've done some. Back when I was in dental school, they let us do that kind of stuff ourselves. And I took the tour off of my father that way, and that was a little shaky for me. Uh, and okay, now when we look at these uh, models from the back side here, you can see the lower anterior teeth are almost chewing into the gum tissue, and frequently you'll have them biting the gum tissue up there. So we're going to intrude these, and the uppers are going to go up, and I'll show you that on the x-ray uh, in just uh, a second here. Let me erase that, and we'll come in. Now here's a Panorex x-ray showing you this is not class one for sure and the upper anterior teeth go down to here and the lower anterior teeth go up to there and these lower anterior teeth are wiring the backs out of the upper you've got the enamel against the enamel and then finally you have enamel against the dentin of the teeth now her wisdom teeth have been removed removed and I don't know when that was done exactly. I guess I could have found out. The lady is 71 years old, though, right now. We started it. Now, we can open somebody's bite. I've done a lot of people in their 80s, but never have been able to get anybody that's in the 90s. And I've had people that go into the 90s when we're doing it, but their teeth will move and everything else. And uh, so this old mess that for a long time they thought you couldn't move the teeth if they were over 20 or something like that. I don't know who decided that, and that's ridiculous. You can straighten anybody's teeth as long as they're living. Uh, and if the bone's good enough, and if this lady has pretty doggone good bone structure on the teeth, so she's not a periodontal case by any means. Uh, and here is the face. When I look at it, and you can see, if I wanted to increase the appearance of this face, I would want to increase this till it's at least about this length in here, see. And that would bring this chin down you know, something maybe a little more than that. Uh, and it'll make the face look younger and better. And we're going to open the bite, too, when we finish. You look at it when we get through with it and see. Okay. Here again, now, we're just the models. We're showing you where those teeth are. And we didn't start it in... 04, I think it's 05 for actually she decided to go ahead and, and work on that. Now when somebody has a deep bite like this, they cannot chew properly. And a lot of people don't think about that. In other words, the only way you get your teeth together is to chew straight up and down. Kind of like a dog. You ever watch the dog chew? He just chops like that. Now you watch a cow chew. And they will grind back and forth on those teeth. Of course, they don't have any uh, as many teeth up in the front as the other animals do uh, in there. But cows grind it back and forth. <coughs> it's actually supposed to be a, about four times more efficient chewing if you grind the food back and forth in here rather than just 
pressing the teeth together, you know, to mash the, the food up. It's more. T it's about four times more efficient. Now I didn't do any uh, research to come up with that, but somebody has, and I, I believe them. Uh, and so you cannot grind your teeth, grind your f uh, teeth together with a deep bite like this. You just run into teeth all the time. <coughs> Excuse me. I get to talking and I get stopped up here. Uh, okay, we'll look at this again. It's class two, division two. Now, it is real uncanny how easy it is to correct the jaw relation on class two, division two cases. I have gone in and you straighten these teeth out and raise them up. And there'll be a place these teeth that go forward. You lower the lower anteriors. And I've had cases, or I had one case that went from class two division two to a slight class three. And I had to wear class three elastics on the case to, to bring it back. So when I level this bite and open it up, it's going to tend to come forward as if it wanted to all the time. Now, she didn't have any temporal mandibular joint problem, but I have a lot of people that their jaws lock back there and it's, it's too far and it's bothering them. They're with their condyles rubbing the retrodiscal tissue back there. So we got a lot not to get into there this morning. Okay, when I open the teeth up and let her bite with the front, that's really all what she's chewing on. This is open almost a half inch back here in the back. So these teeth went down this far, see, and you've got the same distance back in here. But the only way she chews is just up and down this way, like that. So you can learn a lot about the case if you're not used to studying these models and now we're looking at the upper teeth of course we're going to bring them out like that and here and now we've got these tremendous tori but i'm not going to try to do anything with the tori you can move these teeth around and do whatever you want to it just kind of rob a little space from the tongue right here and it's really better i guess if they were out uh, but uh, that's another big deal, and she didn't want to get into that. So we can straighten them up and line them up, and then if she wants to do the Torah later on, she can do it later on. Won't bother anything. Okay, that's the lower anterior. Just another view of the Torah, and as we close together, you see how close these teeth are to the roof of the mouth up here. It's right up against it, but not chewing into it. I've had people that have come in and just be all irritated up here where they actually chew against the gum tissue a lot in there. That's uh, usually a pretty bad thing, but you can see all these teeth are about this much too high on the bottom and the upper is about that much too high or too low on the anterior part of the mouth. Okay, now looking at it with the septum, I mean a panorex, you see the edge of the upper teeth here. I use a deal where I bite together and take the panorex with an old machine and cut it, put it over here, but it gives you a good bite and you can tell where the teeth are. These are not quite as bad class two as this so it's over here, but they're fairly, uh, this is a good class two, of course, and you can see the lower anterior go up there and the upper anterior go down here, and you've got a gap, and if you pull these two teeth together, you'll have a gap back here, the same as this up in front right here.
So what we're going to try to do, uh, this will happen, a lot of it on its own. This lower jaw is going to move forward when I get the uppers out of the way and the lowers out of the way and free that bite up. It will move forward. Then I'll wear some class 2 elastics to bring it out a little further. Uh, usually it doesn't go all the way, but it'll go a lot of the distance. And I, I say I had that one case that actually went from class 2 division 2 to a mild class 3. But that doesn't happen all the time. Now this bite plate we made, this part right here will fit around up there and this would slide right up in here uh, to take the picture they should have had this in place so you can see where we bit to on this to open it up so we could get the brackets on the lower anterior teeth you couldn't put them on with them rubbing right up against the back of these upper front teeth right here so you got to have some type of opening device to open get into that so if you can increase the the skeletal open bite then you can put the blocks up here if it's you if the person is already high angle when they come in and that's where they use the, these high angle cases and you don't advise a a person that hadn't done much orthodontics or anything to jump on these high angle cases or at least work with somebody that knows how to do them uh, and uh, you put blocks back on the lower teeth up here on the lower and on the uh, low angle cases you put your bonding you can bond it on to them here but you can't move the teeth when you got it bonded so I'm using a removable so we can bring these teeth out right while we're uh, doing that. All right, here is the panorex showing you the class two situation back in here. And we're gonna open it up here and we want these teeth to move together back here in the back. And whatever they move together back in here, it'll be greater out in the anterior part. So we'll watch that as it goes. Uh, now, here we are. This is later. And we have opened that up now. And you see the upper teeth are there and the lower teeth are right here. It's very little, it's got a little over, like a over jet and over bite is good. And now you see this molar is behind this one. A while ago, this one was behind, and this was out in front, see? So this has come forward some. You might have got this back a little bit, but not, not much. It's really most of the lower jaw coming forward in here. We've already taken the intruding wires off. I'll show you the intruding wires when we get uh, over there a little bit further. Okay, this is the... Uh, cephalometric that we took I think uh, when we started the case and you see the low angle case in here and the lower teeth are up here and the uppers are down here we're going to open that up some and she'll get a little more uh, vertical height in the face than she's got now but not very much it it does increase though some Okay, that's another view that's taken a little later. Uh, all right, this is, I'm going to show some of the uh, appliance in there that we worked with and what we were doing. And these are little single brackets. This is a wedge, the way we rotate these teeth, put a wedge in there, and that uh, gives me a, a lot of space in here. You see the to bend or make uh, torque, put torque in the wire. This is an in-out bend right there. There's a lot of things you do that. You put these old megas back here and tie these arch wires back. Uh, now, I'm not trying to cover all the orthodontic stuff. I'm assuming you 
uh, know how to put the brackets on or do it. When I lecture and send out these videos, I have no earthly idea how much orthodontics and a lot of uh, maybe orthodontists look at these and see what we're doing, you see. Uh, so that's welcome. I don't mind. And they go everywhere. So whatever you can learn from this, just learn all the orthodontics you possibly can. Every dentist ought to know a lot about orthodontics, whether he wants to do it or not. That affects your diagnosis and what you do to a person. And if you understand orthodontics, you might can fix it that way rather than have to go another way which might not be near as good. So anyway, this is lined up that tore around with the bottom. I've never had any problem with you. you move the teeth all around out here. It doesn't bother. But if you peel these things back, they look like a peeled and not on a log or something. I don't know I can explain it. And you have to cut them all to pieces and chisel them off. <laughs> uh, back when I did, I did some of these while I was in dental school. All right, <clears throat> now the lower anterior, it's a good thing to take these pictures and see, we need to bring this up against those teeth right see, see these things force this down and you tie this tight, and that brings the tooth around that way, see. That's the way you rotate with a single bracket like that. At least that's one way. All right, this is a uh, 05, and now we're about to finish up with the thing, and we use some class two elastics up here, but didn't have to do very much class two work to get the lower jaw to come forward and the upper jaw to go back and we close the space up. And I'm gonna run through this part pretty quick. This is 06. Now we've taken the braces off and uh, we've got a wraparound retainer. Another thing I didn't bring out in there, the, you put the central teeth where they are supposed to go. You put the cuspid where it goes, the bicuspid, everything, as well interdigitated as you can. And when we got through with the case this far, the laterals she had were just not big enough. And once in a while you'll have that happen. Uh, and so rather than squeeze these back, I could have pulled the lower anterior teeth back a little bit, but it really needed a couple of crowns on these teeth. So these are, I think, temporary crowns there on the lateral teeth. We had to widen them out some. I think there's some picture in here that shows us that that's a temporary crown. And But you can see these had to be put in to fill the gaps up above. And the overjet and overbite was good on the case. Now, again, there's a little gap behind the cuspids, but it may have pushed out just a little bit. Now, this is 07, and uh, I think... This may be a permanent crown that's on these laterals. And this is all class one and it's holding up good. And I, I've seen this lady years after this, you know, and uh, her teeth are staying really pretty and nice. And I've got her wearing a retainer with a bite plate, of course, which I think I show a picture in there. So, She's smiling. We got a little more vertical to mention the face in there. Not in that shot. But. Now here are the two, two of the intruding wires. I had some up above that I didn't get a picture of right here. Now that deal right here would be straight and this out here would be coming down. And raise that up. You see you tighten that spring and that pushes that down, it tends to raise this up, but the occlusion keeps it 
hammered down as you go through with it. So we're about 30 minutes into this lecture and I better draw this to a close. And there's an intruding wireless spring on it that was activated more than the other. This comes out of this deal is like that. And when you raise it up, you tighten this spring and that makes this thing want to go down even more. And this is a very efficient way to level anybody's bite. It doesn't matter. They can be, I, I'm sure if I got old, somebody 90 years old that had good bone wanted to do this, it would, it would do it for you. And you'd cut several months up. I mean like two or three months off your treatment time if you try to level these bites with just swing a, one single arch wire. That's uh, 06. Uh, anyway, there those teeth are. I've got more slides in there than I need, but I do need to show you this. This is a bite. This is a retainer that's wrapped around. There's no wires crossing over. And then we add acrylics to this, put them in place, have them hold the head in a normal relation and bite too. And we put the lower anterior fit right up in here. And if they wear this retainer, I have people that use them for 20 and 30 years. They end up sleeping in them and everything. If their teeth come out of contact in here, they have to bite uh, wear them more and their teeth will stay in contact and the bite cannot deepen like it was in there. So this is a way of retaining cases. I mean, and you watch them 20 and 30, 40 years after they're still doing okay. So this is, uh, and here I'm going to show the models to start with. This is where the cuspid was here, and there's where it needs to go. This point needs to go here, this one needs to go there, and this molar here will be back behind. Now you watch as we change this deal. Look where it is. The cuspid is right there, here, here, here. And we've got the bite opened. And we have a good overbite and overjet. And she can grind the food this way. And these are still temporary crowns. They haven't put the final crown on those teeth yet. Uh, whoever's uh, doing that for her. And the other side, the same way. The cusp is going here. And you can look at this. And there it is. And the last time I saw this lady, this is a mirror I've got in her cheek right there that you see. The, uh, that's actually these teeth right here laid out where you can see them straight on. Stick a mirror in the mouth here and shoot a picture of the mirror, see. And you can see you can't get a good shot at it from the side like that. And here the lady is. And that's about the end of this uh, video. We've gained a little bit of height in the face, not much, but some. See, this is more like that. You remember when we started? It wasn't as near as much. This was off somewhere along in here. So the facial structure looks better, functions better, everything's better if you do it properly. So we spent a little more time than I wanted to on here. So I'm going to close out and I thank you for watching. And I hope you learned something from this. And there are many, many people watch this know a lot of orthodox. They don't, uh, but I have to talk as if everybody needs to learn about it. So we'll see you on another video. I hope you'll join our of the group and uh, subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much now.